Good morning, everyone. And good morning to the America and the world. We're live streaming this today, so the entire world will be able to watch this historical moment. It's hard to believe that the school has been in existence for 198 years, and in two years, we'll be celebrating our 200th anniversary of the founding of the school. Of course, today is a very historical moment. We have our time capsule that was buried 95 years ago in 1920, and today we're going to open it. But we have a program first, and then we will open the time capsule. Before I go to ha proceed, I'd like to recognize a few distinguished visitors we have with us today. Our former executive director, Harvey Corson. Where are you, Harvey? <laughs> and my predecessor, Ed Pelletier. We have several members of the board of directors here who are wonderful advocates for the school. I'm just gonna ask them all to please stand up. Any of the board of directors. Thank you. We have many former staff members and many alumni who have been very supportive over the school or the school over the years. So please stand if you are a former staff member or alumni. But our true VIP are students, our staff and administrators, our families, and our friends, our alumni, and our community who have supported the school for the last 198 years. We would not be here if not for all of you people. But also I would like to thank our board of directors, all of the boards who have served the school and kept us viable over the years. But most importantly, I must thank three people Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, Laurent Clare, and Mason Cogswell. They came with a vision, they established the school, and we're still here, so we would like to thank all three of them. Today is Founders Day, and it's also Deaf Heritage Week. We've had many events happening this week. We started with the very exciting academic bowl on Monday. It was a great competition. I'm not sure if all of you know, but we have a new museum coordinator, Brad. He's provided many tours of the museum and helped the students understand more about the history history of this fine institution. We had a movie, No Ordinary Hero, Super Deffy. Stephanie Durand was here to talk to our students. Last night we had a wonderful Deaf Heritage Banquet with all of our students and some alumni that did attend as well to hear Brad Mosley talk about the history of Gallaudet Hall and some of the artifacts that have been saved, the portico, the old chalkboards with the tray. So that was very fascinating. It's still, those items are still in the cafeteria, so during lunch, feel free to take a look at those artifacts that were salvaged from Gallaudet Hall. Also this week, iDeaf News was here doing a nice promo with our students involved. It was very active. They did a beautiful job. If you haven't seen the segment, click on idefnews.com and watch it. Our students did an amazing job talking about the American School for the Deaf. This morning, I went to the middle school. They were comparing past and present. 
They included old signs from a long ago, from the 1800s and early 1900s, and comparing them to today's sign language. It was interesting to see the transition. They were also talking and talking and comparing the mode of dress from then too. So congratulations to the middle schools for what they did this morning. I would also like to thank the students this morning that helped with the flowers. That's a tradition that's been going on for many years, so thank you all. Also, it's traditionary for the West Hartford administration to come to give a proclamation. The mayor, Scott Slifka, was not able to be here this morning, but I will read his proclamation. The Town of West Hartford Proclamation, whereas the American School for the Deaf will celebrate the 198th anniversary of its establishment in special campus ceremonies this week, April 6th through April 10th, whereas the American School for the Deaf has as an esteemed institution in our community has been a good neighbor in West Hartford for 94 years of its third century of service to deaf and hard of hearing children, youth, and adults. And whereas the American School for the Deaf boasts an honor roll of productive citizens and successful professionals among its graduates in the greater Hartford area and whereas the school will formally reflect on its history, its founders, its alumni, and its community during April of 2015. Now therefore be it proclaimed that April 6th through April 10th, 2015 shall be suitably observed at Deaf Heritage Week in West Hartford. And on behalf of the town council and the residents of West Hartford, I, R. Scott Slifka, congratulate the American School for the Deaf on the 198th anniversary of its founding. I would like to invite a couple of students come up to introduce students that will provide the poetry that they entered into the competition, the Marie Philip competition. Good morning, everyone. So exciting to see all of you here. It's really an exciting event today. I'd like to share with you the really wonderful, the Marie Dream Phillips. Did you know that she graduated from here from American School for the Deaf? She went to Boston to work with children who are deaf, and then later she established the Marie Jean Phillips ASL Poetry Story and Art Competition. And we here at American School for the Deaf since 1999, until the present day and age, I think we only missed one. We would send our students there and we would always win first place, either in art or poetry or storytelling. Our students have always come back with some type of award. And last year, let's see, I think there was two first place, no, three first place and second place. It was in the national competition. It was totally awesome. And this year we have an awesome group of students related with art, storytelling, poetry. Really, it gives you goosebumps. So now we have picked two students today to express some poetry. One is, is Jahan Delgado and Trevon Evan Ross. I believe he's, John is involved with track, I believe. I believe he's track, or basketball. I don't know if I mixed them up. Anyway, we'll let them introduce themselves and they'll be able to explain. John, Juan Arrejo Delgado. Before we go ahead, 
I'd like to explain something to you. There is, most of the time, you have an interpreter who voices for you. But when you watch deaf poetry, there is no interpretation. You just watch the visual aspect of what they are doing. Hi, my name is Jahan. Cal. And I'm going to do an alphabet shape poetry. That was beautiful ASL. His expression was just awesome. The next student, Trevon Evans Ross, he was been a student here for quite a long time. Then he moved to North Carolina and he came back this year to attend high school. Hello everyone, I'm Trevon Evans Ross. The title of my poetry is Basketball, one to 10, Handshape. Thank you. Thank you. You did an awesome job. Your expression, there was so much emo emotion involved. That was wonderful. We had another student who was not able to participate. Anyways, thank you so much for all the students that participated this year. And we're looking, I believe it's next week on Friday again is the national competition. That's occurring in, I believe it's in in North, in North Boston. So if any would like to go, you certainly would be able to attend the competition. It's a wonderful, exciting event. And I hope we get another more national winners again. Yesterday, the Learning Center, our neighbors and friends, announced the founding of a new school, school program called the Marie Phillip School. So that's an honor to Marie Phillip. Um, they still call themselves the Learning Center, but the actual school is being called WPS, the Marie Phillip School. During Founders Day, occasionally we recognize special individuals who have made significant contributions to the school and to the community.
We talked about it this year, and we decided to recognize one individual. This person was hired in March of 1982 as a consulting medical director for the school. And she became a regular employee in February of 1984. She served as the medical director for 30 plus years. She's a wonderful diagnostician. She's always available either in person or by phone. Sometimes she's on vacation in California or somewhere, but regardless, we know we can always call her and she will respond and help us resolve any issues that we're having. She always calls all children my friend. She anonymously buys clothing for our children and nobody knows where they come from, but they're from her, so I'm telling you today. <laughs> she has made many outstanding nurses here because she's a very good teacher. She is on the faculty of UConn, or was on the faculty of UConn before establishing her own practice. She's worked with two public schools in Hartford, also with the CREC program. Dr. Ramanan is of whom I'm speaking. She's been our friend, our neighbor in West Hartford, and above all, a committed staff to the school, serving all deaf and hard of hearing children. Her commitment to our students will never stop and her work ethic is exemplary and fits the school's mission. Thank you, Dr. Ramanan. Please come forward. The American School for the Deaf Community Service Award April 10th, 2015, presented to Dr. Ramanan in recognition of her outstanding support and commitment to enhance the quality of life for deaf and hard of hearing children at the American School for the Deaf. You're welcome. She's always been a woman of few words but her message shows through the wonderful work that she does. The time has arrived. Are you ready for the opening of the time capsule? Oh, come on, it doesn't look like you're ready. Are you ready? Okay, that's better. But before we do that, there's a video that we would like to show you that was made by one of our staff members, Darlene Borsati. And she's going to talk a little bit about the time capsule and the history of it. So please watch the video. The time has arrived. Are you ready for the opening of the time capsule? Oh, come on. It doesn't look like you're ready. Are you Hello. ready? My name is Diane Bersani. Okay. That's better. But before we do America that, the there's a video that we would like to show you that was made and by I'm one really of our staff members. Talk a little about bit about something. the time. There was something secret buried in the corner of Gallaudet Hall, and that was on March 9th in 1920. Anyways, on March 9th of 2015, they discovered the box that had been buried there for 95 years. People wondered why it was done. In 1920, the third school for the deaf in Hartford was on Asylum Avenue and they called it the Old Hartford.
The old Hartford was built in 19, 1821 and continued for till 1921, 100 years. But on occasion, there were problems and issues with the pipes. The building was old and needed repair, so they decided to demolish it. ASD purchased farmland here in West Hartford to build the fourth school for the deaf. July 22nd, 1920, people from Old Hartford came to West Hartford to celebrate the new school. The president of ASD's board at that time was Dr. Henry Perkins. He was a former teacher and principal. He had a time capsule, which he placed different items in. They were old papers, the newspapers from 1920, school reports, the American era, it used to be called the New Era, now it's been renamed, some coins from the time, and what else, I'm not sure. All of that was placed in the time capsule and sealed. Dr. Henry Perkins, cemented it into the cornerstone of Gallaudet Hall. Dr. Perkins explained the reason for the time capsule. It was pretty interesting. He wanted people to remember the celebration on July 22nd of 1920. And all the work that had been done and all the accomplishments of the school, he was hoping would continue. The school would never close. He was hoping for another 100 years. He was also thankful for the spirit that had been passed on since 1817. And he wanted it to continue for many more years to come. So, 1820 to 1920. In 1920, they started to build the school. They opened it in the fall of 1921. And of course, the students came. The alumni that graduated from the school had passed on the same message over the years. That there was something secret, but very important, buried at the corner of Gallaudet Hall near the GAA room. GAA stands for the Girls Athletic Association. It was like a club. The girls would get together on a monthly basis and talk about sports. That was the reason for the name of the room. In my time, which was 1970, middle school students heard a lot from the high school students about something secretive that was buried there. I really didn't understand what was going on. In 2014, when they decided to demolish the building, It had been in existence for almost 100 years. The alumni told the ASD's administration about this thing that was buried in the corner of Gallaudet Hall. The administration took note and talked to the company manager who was in charge of the demolition about retrieving the time capsule. They were shown a simple map of where it was buried. <laughs> Two guys from the demolition company were able to retrieve the time capsule. They said the map had made it very easy to find. ASD's superintendent with the time capsule, buried in 1920, you'll see. And behind him, you'll see Gallaudet Hall being demolished. And here's the time cap capsule.
Maybe some of you remember a long time ago when you used to have boxes that looked like this outside your front or back door for the milkman to put your glass milk bottles in to keep them fresh until you would retrieve them. It looks pretty much like that. Tomorrow on April 10th, Founders Day, we will be honoring three important men, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, Laurent Clare, and Dr. Cogswell. And we will open the time capsule. Who will open it? I have no idea. How they're going to open it, I also don't know. But tomorrow, you will all be watching this occur. Once that's done, I will be back to tell you about what was found inside the time capsule. Thank you for watching. Dr. Perkins, his picture is right there next to me. He had some comments when he was asked about gratitude and what that meant. Abbé Sicard and Jean Massieu, who were Laurent Clair's first teacher, responded, the memory of the heart, that's what gratitude is. This year on Founders Day, we will pay tribute to the memories that have been, been preserved in this time capsule for many years. It was buried in the cornerstone It's extremely significant to not only honor the spirit of gratitude, but when we bury this, we do it in the spirit of hope for future success of the business enterprise. It's the beginning of faith. And end the corner we must think of it as the arch, which is symbolic of something which all the rest of the structure depends, something that supports and sustains. Although modern architecture involves a different kind of construction, remember this is from 1920, still what we do today is typical of that significant act, the laying of a cornerstone. We must consider that ceremony. We are cementing ourselves as if we were into the very fabric of this building in which we are so keenly interested. This little group represents all of those most intim intimately concerned in our enterprise. The board of directors, the principal, the teachers of the school, the architects, and the builders. We should here consecrate ourselves to supporting the work of the school, just as this cornerstone is to support the edifice we are erecting. Another feature of this occasion is in conformity with an old custom of sealing up a box containing old papers from the past of the founding of the school, a city directory of today, current newspapers, school reports, and coins of the present year. I hope there's some gold coins in there. You never know. This, in a way, links us both with the past and with the future and symbolizes the continuity of our body of work. I think today we are too apt to overlook the importance of continuity and are inclined to ignore the past, which, after all, is an essential foundation for the present. When this box is opened, perhaps 100 years hence, 
It will serve as a reminder of this ceremony and what it means to us. Just as today, we should remember the founders of the school and all that they stood for. So that was his speech from 95 years ago. So some people are asking how this was sealed. When I first took a look at it, it was truly sealed. It was welded, soldered. If we tried to open it today, it would take many hours. So I asked our plants operations director, Jeff Pelletier, to start to open it. Not to open the whole thing. I said, you can't open it completely. Leave it partly closed, two spaces on either side or in the corners. So today, Jeff is going to come up and finish opening the box. And then I'll be inviting some students to come up and help me see what's inside, OK? Jeff Pelletier, please come up. He's using a Dremel. It's kind of like a drill. One part of it's open, now the other. Thank you, Jeff. No ghosts, no ghosts of the past. Wow. Uh, could I have a few students come up, please? This is what it looks like inside. Let you see. I have the honor to have the two school reporters from Died I deaf news here. They're going to help film the inside so people can see what it looks like. And take one item out. I can't see. The Hartford current. What year is it? March 22nd, 1920. How much did it cost? Three cents. Three cents for the newspaper. It's another one. It's a newspaper. March 22nd, 1920. This is the Hartford Times. Same cost, three cents. Thank you. Hartford Directory. This is a directory of Hartford from 1919. Ooh, I don't know. We're going to save that one. We won't open it. Take another item. Look at 
looks like a book. It's a book of some kind. It's, the, it's from West Hartford. It's the city directory. Okay, thank you. The things are a little bit wet. My hands are turning purple. Some papers. This is about who made that book. There's more in there. More directories, and it's what? I don't want to open this. Um, this looks like the um, architect design for the building for the Gallaudet Hall. That's what it looks like. Pretty cool. Okay, one more item. more plans for the building. We need to find some gold in here, right? Is it gold? Is it gold? No. <laughs> some old coins from that time period. A little bit rusted. I'm trying to see what the year is. Hard to see the year. Kind of rusted. We're going to have to clean them off to find the year, but these are the coins. Hopefully, they're worth millions of dollars today. You never know. Coin. We have to find a coin collector and find out. That could help the school if they were worth millions. More coins are in the envelope. And more coins. I'm going to leave this to Brad and people that are archive experts. So we're just going to leave everything here. Frederick Oliver something. I don't know who that man was. Brad. You've got some homework to do. Frederick Oliver K something. FOK. I don't know who FOK is. Brad, you're going to have to look into this and find out for us. OK, thank you. OK, these are very exciting things. Of course, we'll leave them here for you to take a look at. All right, really that concludes our celebration for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing history in the making. Thank you again for coming. And these senior citizens, please join us for lunch with our students today at 1130 in the cafeteria of our new building, the Gallaudet Clare Education Center. Thank you, and thank you, America, for watching. <laughs>